Hello, everybody. This is Lori Grace Bailey, and normally this is the Storm Before the Calm podcast. However, I realize that it is the beginning of con- convective season out on the plains and even in Arizona, actually. We've seen quite a many storms come through the region over the last few weeks, actually bringing lightning um, and some severe weather out on the plains and even a few tornadoes. Uh, But we're also expecting to see a really strong, severe weather season here coming up. And it's already being evidenced by the, the, some of the storms that have come through. Wanted to finally do a video that people have been talking about online for quite some time. Um, And it's the topic of lightning uh, capturing devices. If you're a photographer and you understand the frustration of trying to capture lightning, maybe you just use your iPhone and you're trying to just take video of it. And sometimes you get lucky and get a good shot. Um, This is actually for the photographers who have a DSLR like a or a a mirrorless camera like a Sony Alpha body that I have. I have the Sony Alpha, Sony Alpha 1, uh, the 7 R Mark III and the A7S III uh, and the A- A7 III. But if you have a Canon a 5D or a, a whatever the, the mirrorless version is, um, and or if you have the mirrorless Nikon or a, a, a D750 or something like that, you'll and you use it to capture lightning, you'll understand how frustrating it can be. And I wanted to talk about these things here and now and actually just give a verdict of my experience. A little bit about my background, and I'm going to talk about more of my background and more of my story in future podcasts um, as I just do some of these single uh, recordings. But I wanted to, to today t- tell a little bit about my lightning capturing story. And by the way, I was struck by lightning, I think it was 2001. Um, I experienced severe short-term memory loss when that happened. And uh, a little bit more about that story later on, too. Needless to say, my fascination for lightning has remained throughout the years, Um, my fascination with weather, and uh, I finally get to chase storms even now into my 50s. I'm not going to uh, stop chasing my dream, and I finally have the opportunity to do it, especially living in southern Arizona. So uh, being able to capture lightning, being able to see beautiful desert storms during the monsoon season, and yes, now even chasing tornadoes on the plains. Uh, by the way, once you chase supercells, the monsoon is is its own pretty thing, but it's very addictive once you start chasing supercells on the plane. So back to the story here. Many people ask, Lori, how do you capture lightning and, and how do you do it? And to just to let you know, when I first started shooting lightning back around 2015, I was taking my cameras, my my DSLRs, and I was pointing them at the skies, and I didn't know any better. So all I did was hold the shutter button down and just sit and pray and wait. And I'd get home with maybe two or 3,000 images at the end of the day, and I had to go through and cull through all, that, all those images to maybe capture one or two or even three uh, bolts of lightning that I timed just right. And that was really frustrating. And, and most of the time, those bolts happen to just have the, uh, the return strike, right? The return stroke, if you understand what that is. Um, it, it wasn't the pretty branchy lightning that you see in some of the images, but it was just that, just that stick of a bolt. And uh, it was frustrating. But over time, I learned how to capture lightning better and better each and every year. And I'm excited to be able to share this knowledge with you. And I'm going to talk about Today, I'm going to talk about these devices that actually try to capture the lightning for you. So um, I've got three here. I'm going to talk about four um, because the fourth one was honestly, uh, I'll talk about that later, but it was honestly so bad after one year. I gave it to a friend and he was really mad too because he didn't capture anything with it either. So I'll talk about that one too. Um, This is not a sponsored video, by the way. These were all purchased by me many, many times over on some of them. And one of them was actually given to me, I will say that. Um, and there was a no, um, there was no expectation. I was, I was messaged saying, we know that you're a lightning uh, photo photographer. We want you to just test it. We want to, to hear what your results are. We want your true opinion on this negative or positive. And I'll talk about that too. And, and 
And I'll talk about the negative and positives in all of that. But I do have these devices to show you right here and now. And I'm excited to do that because I finally have this little bitty studio that's taken me forever, huh, forever to try and set up. But I think I have what I want to do. Let's get started. So the first uh, lightning capturing device that I learned of was something called the lightning trigger. And it's a copyrighted term, so I'm going to be really careful how I say it. All of these devices, people often call them all lightning triggers. However, there's one by the company, um, and I, it's actually this one right here. It's, the company is actually called lightningtrigger.com, and I have to hide my face for you to see it. There you go. <laughs> and this is called the LT4, if you can see that. Um, this version is called the LT4 and it's like 360 or 80 bucks or something. Um, it's pretty expensive. However, this, this device has been with me for years and years. I say that because I've got one, two, three, I've bought one, at least one or two every year. But the problem with these things, if you can see this here, I'm going to show you here. You can see the hot shoe is plastic and they're all broken so i have as you can see duct tape just to try to hold it on because these things every time the cameras fall over these things break very easily the other thing about these is you have to buy the cables from directly from the company and you cannot buy these cables from amazon or get them from anywhere else even though they look uh, the multi-term cable for the Sony's, even though they look identical, the wiring is exclusive to the device and those cables are like 30 something dollars also a piece. So it's very, very pricey too. As you can see, these three, these are just three. I have probably like eight of them and m most of the others are completely broken. Um, I should have sent them back because the guy that operates the company, he is, he's relatively, uh, um, open to communication, but I know that he's so busy on his own too. I think he's a, I think it's a one man operation. I don't know for sure, but, um, he's been somewhat responsive. It's just taken the biggest problem with these is that it takes a long time to get them shipped. At least every time I try to get a new one, it, uh, it takes a while. So the, the pros with the LT4, if you know who Michael Binsky is, if you know who John Serlin is, um, uh, many, many other storm chasers, Jim, uh, Jim Tang, I believe carries this also, um, so many people, so many amazing, uh, storm photographers carry that LT4. And it was because of that, that I decided to start investing in these. And these are the best in the, on the market. I will say as far as detecting the lightning and getting the shot, um, up until last year, when I think there was another company that uh, put it to the test, and I'm going to talk about that. The great thing about the LT4 um, is it does have a couple of switches. You, it, it takes a little while to, to figure out the settings, but once you get the switches down, and once you get the settings down, it is pretty awesome to, to, to get that shot, have that reliability, and, uh, and the, the success rate. I would say the, the biggest plus with this thing is the success rate of capturing daytime lightning shots. Um, and that's pretty much all I use it for. Once the sun gets down below the horizon, I will typically turn my camera into time-lapse mode and shoot using two-second intervals or maybe three-second three intervals. And guess what? You have a time-lapse and you have lightning in your time-lapse and you can use those individual shots. little secret there if you didn't know. Um, once the sun goes down, you really don't need any of these devices. But that being said... I'm not going to be buying these anymore after I've probably spent, I don't know, maybe $2,000, $3,000 over the life of, uh, over my storm chasing career on those. Um, I will say the other problem, the, the other down part about these things is that when the cables break, you don't know if it's the cable or if it's the box. And so you'll be switching out cables. And of course, if you want these replacement cables, they're super expensive. And um, you'll put a new cable on and the, the unit might or might not work and you still don't know. And all in the while the, the storm's falling or the storm's dropping bolts and you're just sitting there really frustrated trying to figure out what's the problem with this device. And for me, I've noticed that it's just a little, 
uh, three, three and a half millimeter or whatever that little connector is. Um, if I jiggle the connector around, I'll start getting triggers um, from the device. But if it's not in the right spot or the wind blows it a little bit, then you miss the shot. So as you understand, I, as you can see, I've been really frustrated with the lightning trigger from lightningtrigger.com. Um, I've loved it all my career, all my storm chasing uh, years. However, last year I bought a new device and here's the reason why. Um, I did buy this brand new lightning trigger. As you can tell, it's still clean and everything. It's broken. But I bought this device um, just before I, I, actually I bought it in February, late February, thinking that um, I would get the device delivered before I ended up heading to the plains um, in late May to start capturing lightning. And I didn't get it until the week after I left to the plains uh, on my storm chase. So it was so frustrating uh, not to have that delivered from late February, March, April, and then at the end of May, um, the week I was on the planes, I received notice that the package had arrived. So it was really frustrating that with that being said, since I didn't have a lightning capturing device that I knew I could reliably take out to the planes with me, um, I reached out um, to a friend. His name is Robert Gallucci. He's a local Arizona photographer, and he has been he has just been. Uh, head over heels with this company called MK Controls, and they have a they have a, a lightning capture device called the Lightning Bug for years. And I've seen people. Uh, I'm going to point it, hold it like this. There you go. Let's see. Is that it? Yeah. Hopefully you can see it. Come on, focus. There we go. So this is the Lightning Bug Plus from MK Controls, and um, there used to be the lightning bug, the original one, and I've actually tested it in the in the past and I've had other friends test it. And it was uh, the success rate for daytime lightning captures was okay. It was, uh, I guess it was an average uh, capturing device, but I didn't hear the greatest uh, comments on it. And so I stuck with my LT4 at the time. However, the last couple of years, they came out with this, or maybe it was just last year, they came out with this. Let me show it to you again. Hide my face. There we go. The Lightning Bug Plus. And um, it's pretty simple. If you can, if you look, you've got a, uh, you actually have a metal hot shoe. So you got to be careful. If this thing breaks off on your camera, you're going to, it's going to break your camera, um, hot shoe if, if you drop your camera. That being said, I still like that it's a more solid unit because I've never, all, all the, all the entire time I used it last year, it didn't break on me, and even when the camera fell on its side, it was totally fine. This was the only device that I actually used when I was on the planes. Why? Because I, I did not have my lightning trigger, my LT4, um, at the time, and I, I was desperate for a trigger, so I spent the money buying this thing, um, based off of the recommendation by my my friend Robert. And I bought one. It was delivered to me in two or three days. And I still had plenty of time the rest of the week before I had to leave for the planes. So I got this thing in like three days. I don't know what their delivery time is right now, but they were super responsive. Um, the, the, the shipping discount that I was supposed to get, they resolved that very quickly. And um, their email was just wide open. It was back and forth um, each and every day, every time I had a question about the device, I got answers every single day. And that was the, the thing that I was so frustrated with, uh, with uh, the other person from Lightning Trigger is that, yes, he would respond, but he was busy and I would not always get an immediate answer. So for me, having that product to be able to get a quick response, especially for someone like me who then takes off for days at a time or weeks at a time, um, it was great to have that. So Needless to say, I t I, all I had with me was this device, and I'd never used it before. I headed out to the plains with, with some friends, and the first thing I did was, oh, we got into Texas, and there was a storm uh, coming across the plains, and I just threw this thing on top of my Sony uh, A1, and I just turned it on, plugged it in. I didn't know how to use it. It's got some sensitivity buttons and stuff, and uh, I didn't know what I was really doing, so... I just threw it on there and then I helped my friends and we were jumping up and down because we were capturing really pretty pictures uh, on the horizon. And uh, by the time I started looking at the shots in the back of the camera, this thing did not miss. It wasn't missing. Um, and it was 
just getting those same kind of hits that I get with the LT4. And I was just sitting there like, okay, this is a good start to the uh, to the season for me. And since this was all that I had for almost two weeks out on the plains, every single time I had storms or we chased storms, it was capturing shots that were super fast with the branches. You know, it was beautiful shots. And I really didn't have to adjust the settings very much, the little ups and downs. Um, I would just maybe increase the sensitivity if I didn't think it was capturing. Um, maybe just by one little notch. And all of a sudden I was capturing um, tons of shots. There, it would capture quite a few uh, images without lightning in it, but that's okay. I'd rather have 10 shots that it was triggering off of or uh, it was capturing off of, I should say. Um, and then the one bolt instead of no bolts and no no shutter, shutter clicks, right? So I was really impressed with that. This is still the same plug and the same device. I know it's in my hand still, but I was really impressed with this thing. And then the monsoon season came around. And I when I got back to Arizona and I had the this device along with my brand new uh, lightning trigger, my LT4. So I had them side by side. And the great thing about that is um, at the same time, here's where the third one comes in. <laughs> I know it's a lot. Um, I was... Somebody from the MyOps company reached out to me and they said, hey, we're not talking about sponsorships or anything like that, but we would like you to, if you're willing, we'd like to send you a unit so that you can test it because we know the storm season's here. We want you to just test it. Um, we don't care what the response is. We don't want you to just uh, sell it, you know, hype it up or whatever it is. We don't want you to, to, to promote the, the, the unit. We just want to hear what your results were. And good or bad, we want to know what, what the results were. So I actually was sent this device. I forget what it's even called. It's the MyOps. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a couple of different devices. This is the one with the orange. Here, I'll hold it up like this. There we go. Let's see. I forget what it's called. Um, I don't know. I forget which which unit it's called, but if it's this orange one, and it also does the things um, you can. I think it's got an intervalometer and stuff. And I actually put that on my third camera when I was able to. Um, I was able to put three cameras all in in the same line, um, and let them all do their thing. Fire them all up, point them at the same storm, and the results. I'd have to go back. I've got hundreds of thousands of photos that I'd have to show you eventually. But there were times where. Um, all three were triggering or were releasing the shutter and they were doing it at different times or different intervals. Um, some were faster than the others. I would say that both of these, the LT4 and the, the Lightning Bug Plus were capturing, I would say probably on par with each other for the number one position they were capturing more shots of lightning and even those distant bolts way off at the horizon, you know, 20 miles away, that little bitty tiny stick of lightning way off in the distance, both of them were capturing those far off shots. And I was really impressed with that. Um, and the MyOps, I will say that the MyOps actually did capture shots uh, more often than I thought that it would. Um, Cause I have a lot of friends who are also storm chasers and I have a lot of friends um, especially in the Arizona area, who are not very fond of this device. And so I was actually very skeptical when I was sent this unit that it wouldn't um, hold up or that it wouldn't stand the test of time or hold up against these other two units that were just capturing the bolts that I really wanted to capture. Um, so maybe it's the sensitivity. It took a little more tweaking. There is a lot more that this thing does. But I will say that when I had all three of them, um, this one was missing probably, I don't know, 30% or 40% of the shots that the other two were capturing. And that's kind of a bummer because there were sometimes I would just angle the, the cameras just a little bit off or they were at different focal lengths maybe. Um, and I don't know if that matters or not, but the the MyOps, I would, I would give it an, a good rating. I, yeah, I would say that the MyOps, out, out of a 1 to 10 scale, I probably would give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I would give the MK controls and the LT4 probably a 9 out of 10 for both of them. Um, but I would actually give MK controls a 9.5 out of 10 
just because of the responsiveness for, with the company. Um, also, this unit can be, it has a USB-C uh, somewhere around here. I think it's on the inside um, with the battery. And you can actually you can actually run this thing using a USB-C cable, uh, powered cable, and it'll run the device while it's on the camera as long as you have an extra battery pack that does that for you. Um, I just like to keep the 9 volt. The 9 volt in here, when you turn this off, it doesn't accidentally turn on um, like this. If you have an LT4, you'll notice that if you're driving around and you accidentally bump the switch, you'll get to your location, maybe three hours away or one hour away, and the unit will, the battery will be dead. I've lost so many batteries. I end up carrying a huge pack of batteries with me when I'm out on the road just because of that reason that, um, so what we ended up doing, as you can see by this one, the battery is backwards. So when you're done shooting, I would take the battery out, flip it around, and that way it wasn't connecting to the to the the, uh, the diodes or whatever they're called. Um, it's just, was not a fun thing to be to get to where you want only to discover that your your trigger wasn't working because the battery was dead so that being said i would say if you want to know my take on all these three different triggers um, i'm going to give you the verdict and by the way and but here's the fourth one i was i actually paid for a fourth i wasn't given one i was i paid for a fourth device Early on, um, probably like in 2019, 2020, it's called the Strike Finder 2. And I don't know what the company is or I, I don't have any communication or contact with them. I bought it from B&H or I forgot where I got it from. But I bought the unit, put it on my cameras, never got that thing. There were some epic bolts that I, I actually remember the location looking at this beautiful storm coming across the, the, the Santa Cruz River, River Valley and all I had with me at the time was the strike finder. And I was thinking, well, if it can at least get 50% of the shots that the, the LT4 can, I'll be happy. It, it, it captured maybe one bolt out of 15 really glorious bolts. And I was really, really so angry and frustrated. I gave that strike finder too, to a friend who said, I'll take a free lightning trigger. And he went out and used it. And he could not get that thing to work either. All of your mileage may vary. I'm just going to say this for, for all of these devices. I've, I have several friends, um, probably one of the best lightning photographers in the world. He keeps winning awards. Stop it, Tim. Tim Baca carries a MyOps. He, I think this is the one. I think Hunter Falks also carries a MyOps trigger or the MyOps device, and they swear by it. Um, honestly, what I think it is is I think – it's like a, it's like a car, right? Like you could get a lemon or you could get a really great unit. And I think it depends if you're not having success with this. I did notice that the, the people from my ops are very responsive and I think they're really willing to work with you. If you are not having a good success with the my ops, instead of throwing it away or getting angry or just yelling about the company online, I think the best thing to do is to contact them and say, Hey man, I'm missing shots. This thing says it's supposed to capture lightning and I'm missing bolts and it's very frustrating. What can you do to help me and, and explain to them? They were very receptive to that when I was talking to them about the, the ups and downs. And they were just very um, grateful that I was able to review this thing. And it's kind of yucky and sticky. You can see it's, I think the, the duct tape uh, got on top of this one. But I'm still pretty happy with it. And I'm going to try it again this year and adjust the tweak the settings again more. So that at the end of 2024, I can see if, if this unit um, has improved because of my own uh, ability to change some of the settings or if it's still the same and just not as successful. But the verdict, I will have to say, is the Lightning Bug Plus. It's like, I forget how much it is, 300 bucks or something. Let me hide my face. There you go. Come on, camera. Just I can't do this myself. I do love this unit. I love it so much. I'm going to tell you something. I reached out to, I think it's Dave or Tim. Tim's the owner, I believe. Dave, one of the guys or a couple of the guys there, I think one of them lives in Georgia or they might all live in Georgia. Even as where he lived in the, in the state of Georgia, they had a huge power outage from tornadoes that had ripped through and severe weather that had ripped through the, the area. 
the night before, they reached out and said, hey, we're going to we want to get back to you, but we're kind of uh, busy trying to restore power to our neighborhoods and stuff. So give us a couple of days. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. No worries. Just take your time. I understand you're in a you're in a bad place, but I can wholeheartedly, at least my own experience, say that this thing for the Sony cameras, I don't know how well they work with Canon. I hear from Robert Gallucci, another professional photographer, this thing doesn't skip a beat. And if you look up Robert Gallucci, you can take a look at his photos and all he uses is the MK controls, Lightning Bug Plus. And his photos are really phenomenal, really great. I encourage you to, to look him up also and maybe talk to him about his experience also. So again, your mileage may vary, but the champion for the year is going to be, for me, the MK Controls Lightning Bug Plus. And um, I'm actually going to be loaning a few out to my to people who uh, come, out, come on uh, storm chasing trips with me if they want to during the monsoon, if they don't have a trigger with them or a device with them. I will uh, loan them one or two if, if need be. Um, but I love the product. I love capturing lightning. And again, everyone, if remember this only applies to lightning during the daytime. I don't recommend using any of these devices in the evening uh, somewhere close to sunset, talking about using them during the daytime when it's really hard to capture lightning and your shutter speed is super fast. Um, at night and even during the evening, during the sunset hours, and even if the sun is behind the clouds and it's almost sunset, and if I can drag that shutter down to like one second interval uh, for a full second, I'll go ahead and turn the camera into the intervalometer mode, turn it into the intervalometer mode so that I can use the intervalometer to capture uh, a whole time lapse. And I'll just let it capture photo after photo. and. Um, at the end of the evening or at the end of the, the, the session, I might have 300 or 500 images and I might have lightning in any of those, right? Because if you're dragging that shutter um, and dragging the shutter, I mean, like we're talking like one second, the shutter's open for one second or two seconds or three seconds. Um, you're going to capture lightning at that point. And the best way to do it is to just do it that way. That's my best uh, recipes for success but you can't do that during the daytime unless you use a really, really dark ND filter. And there's a reason that I would not recommend using ND filters. Some people still use them. And if you use them, don't use a really, really dark one. But that's that's a tale for another day. And I'd love to talk more with you if you want to talk lightning, you want to talk storms or photography. If you're interested in coming up on, on this show um, and maybe getting back to the storm before the calm, tell me a little bit about your personal story and how you overcame uh, some of the, the really difficult challenges in your life to, to get to pursue extreme weather or extreme sports and do the crazy things that some of us storm chasers do, make sure that you reach out and I'd love to hear more from that. But I hope this was informative. It's 30 minutes long. I cannot wait to get out there again. I've got these devices. I hope I get a chance to use all of them. Um, I've got a drone and I've got some other stuff. I just wanted to capture lightning and I want to capture beautiful scenes this year. And I'm excited to do that. You're never too old to chase and chasing is for everybody. So I'll talk to you all later in on the storm before the calm podcast. I hope everyone is well. Take care, everybody.